The name of the young man that played music with you was Chris is Bowlby. Chris Bowlby. Yeah. He is a very talented young man. Of course. Is he not? Of course. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, Many of your friends are really talented. Uh, people, it's like kind of our version yeah. of eugenics. Hello, my name is Gary Tillotson, and I want to welcome you to Studio Three and Three Quarters. A couple of seasons ago, it was my good fortune to have the opportunity to talk with two young men who were producing a television program here in Lincoln at the time. These are two young men that I happen to believe are the funniest, the most creative, the most inventive, the wittiest young men that I think I've ever had the occasion to meet here in Lincoln. They were producing this program of theirs on a monthly basis here in the Lincoln market over public access channel 14. It was called the Tom Foolery and Man Cat Do Show. And I happen to believe it was one of the most creative and inventive shows I think I've ever seen. They began producing the show when they were, what, seventh graders or eighth graders, and they produced it for like four long seasons. As a matter of fact, we might want to take a look at one of the clips from one of those early tomfoolery and man cat do shows. So, Mr. Director, if you'll punch up a clip from one of those early shows. Well, Justin, I must say that it's great to be back on the television again. Yeah, it really is great. It, it makes me feel warm. All over? All over, all inside and throughout. Well, it's really great to be back on and feel warm, but it's even better when we can give something back to the audience, to you at home. You know, I was just thinking about that. It's been a long time since we've done a tape for those at home. Do we have one ready? I do believe we do. In fact, we have the Tom Fleury Man Cat Do Golden Precious Moments for You at Home, and it's for sale. It's in stores now. It's the Golden Precious Moments. It's all those precious moments so good they're golden. Now, how about the time that we ate biscuits? That biscuit was so big, it was a trisket. There's always our discussion on jazz musicians. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy Kenny G just as much as the next fella. How about the time when we uh, used the word panache in a sentence? Honey, you got panache. Honey, you got panache. Honey, you got the panache. There's always the, mo the time when we got into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Smells like someone farted on the Christmas tree. Or how about the time when we had a surprise in the fridge? Those aren't oysters. They're severed heads. <laughs> There was always the epic Walt Disney skit. Presenting the newest Disney cinematic masterpiece, The Cigarette Opera, featuring Buster Poindexter as Scooter. Let me tell you, that's some hot, hot, hot stuff, kids. And Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen as the Spork Sisters. Give me light, sis. Okay, but Mom says you should be down to two packs a day. How about the time when we celebrated the birthday of the Bill of Rights? Well, I love the First Amendment, so shut up! There's always the time when we got too involved watching the Fresh Prince Blossom Hour. <sighs> Joey Lawrence! What a fox! Whoa! How about the time when we interviewed Blind Mel and Chitlin? There was always our favorite guest, the differently other disabled man. I really like my new prosthetic arm, but it itches. And also, the last, last but not least, the police officer skit. What? Well, Osfra, I haven't been drinking. Uh, uh, I'll come quietly. Now, you don't only get these 10 golden moments, but you get an entire 60 minutes of That's precious moments. That's 30 minutes on each side. It's on a reel-to-reel -reel basis. One, one reel. The other reel rhymes. So. And yeah. in the reel winds. So it, it plays in most audio cassette tape players, too. So there's really no problem. And it's in stores now. But... You know, it's kind of cheesy to take our word for it. I mean, after all, it's our tape. Why don't we listen to someone else who has a non-biased opinion? Give a guest testimonial. I liked it so much, I keep it in my pants. That's right. It's the golden, precious moments 
the Tom Fuller Man Cat Do All Time Best Precious Moments, and it's in stores now. now. Now it's my good pleasure to really be able to introduce to you Justin Firestone and Kevin Gregorius. Thank you both for coming and sitting here and talking. It's mm. really going to be an enjoyable time for me because I haven't seen you in a while. Well, and, it's, oh, it's fun for us to be here. It's fun for us, yes. This is a much nicer environment. I think it's really going to be enjoyable for those of us who were fans of the tomfoolery <laughs> and Man Cat Do show. <laughs> for all to find out <laughs> All four of us. To find out what you people have been doing, what the two of you have been doing since the last time that you did a show, which was, what, a year and a half ago, something like that? Three, four, who knows? Three, four <laughs> years. Long time. Ago. It was a long time. Yes, yes, eons ago. We yes. Were, but we little people. Back when we were like this. Yeah, yes, and now you're all big people. Mm -hmm. Behind you a grasshopper. Yeah, right. Has life been pretty interesting for you in the past few months? Hmm. Well, I, I, interesting is a word. From what I understand from Kevin, I, I, I'd assume that he has had a more interesting <laughs> life at school than I did. But well, uh, interesting is a word. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's something else I, I always found interesting? Every week, that, not every week, but every month when I would tune into your program, I was always interested to see how you were going to start the shows oh. and what kind of introductions that you did. Well, when, when, because your introductions sometimes were as creative as anything you ever did yes. on the shows. And so I would really like to see an introduction to a Tom Foolery and Man Cat Do show. So if the director out there could punch up the old introduction button, we can go to one of those introductions Absolutely. to a Tom Foolery and Man Cat Do show. So if you'll do that, director. Hi, I'm Kevin Gregorius. Welcome to the Tom Foolery and Man Cat Do really special. Now, Following our short four or five month lapse of having any shows at all, we've decided to bring back the award winning Tom Flurry Man Cadu show with this hour plus long special for you. Now then, we've, we've got some really exciting stuff. If, if you remember um, the infomercial bits we, we did, uh, the, the Ron Popeil spoofs, uh, we uh, rehashed that for you. Uh, we, we've got some more Precious Moment uh, tapes to give away. We've got, um, oh wow, we, we've just got a great hour of, of classic Tom Boy Man Can Do humor and entertainment for you there. And, um, well, why am I doing all the talking here? Uh, there's usually two of us, so uh, Justin? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Justin's here. What do you want? Why don't you, why don't you come out here? Out there the on camera. stage with you? I, I know there, there's a lot of shiny uh, objects and the, the right. people can see you, but what's uh, but um, what's this uh, like this really wing um, thing here? I don't see any wing. I have no idea what you're talking about. This thing? Um, Did it fall I, off? Or I, I guess it must have. Um, anyway, we, we've got the special. Oh yeah. Um, welcome to the Tom Fuller Man Cat Do really special. And to so the award-winning. The award-winning really special. Tom We've been Boy gone for do. like five years. And We've been <laughs> gone for ages. I... <laughs> or... Oh! Oh! Like oh. <laughs> it's been so long. Hey, fellas. Hasn't How are been you? long what, enough. What, what are you, like, doing? <laughs> oh, I was just wandering around the neighborhood uh, walking my fly, my little butterfly there. He seems uh, to have died. <laughs> I, I mean, think is that's too bad. I I think his wings. I think some reconstructive off. surgery might help, but boy, Kevin, I sure was playing a little trick on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was that was funny. Wow, that's <laughs> you sure you don't have like someone write that stuff for you? Nope, nobody. It's all on you. Oh, not head. not that, Tillotson. Nope. That, that that's why just it. me. That's why you are our guest. Yeah. <laughs> Colby Starker, special guest. And that'll be on the really special. Really special. So how are
Now, I liked that introduction. I thought well, the, that butterfly was wonderful. Well, the butter you know, they kept falling apart. Well, I, I slipped off. Shot the where did the music come from? Oh, I'm, I'm too modest. <laughs> well, stop that, being so it, modest. It came, it came from the speakers, of course. Thank you <laughs> for that technological yes, explanation. Yes. Someone in this great universe had to create mm. that music. Why, of course. Do we know who created the music? I know. Yeah. Yes, Would that I'm, person happen to be I, I, uh, one of the three of yes, us and I, not me? Yes, I wrote it. You wrote the music. Oh, yes. And what performed the music? A uh, computer. Your handy dandy little computer. Yeah. So you created that music out of your very own little creative mind. Oh, yeah. And your very own little computer. Oh, yeah. I think together. we've got some, uh, some other music throughout some of the clips that we have that you might want to look for. And, and that's, that's all awesome. Justin Price music. Oh, yeah. A lot of our old shows. A lot of our old The introduction music, the end themes were. Justin's compositions. And Oftentimes sometimes played by with, friends with of yours, Chris Bowlby and Bowlby. Yeah. We also had, uh, well, on our old shows, we had like a little Casio keyboard. And all it Those had was... Those were the really early shows. Oh, Those were yes. The, the terrible shows. Yeah. And all you had to do was hit a button and it would play kind of a samba beat with just a chord, just a chord just going... Dun, dun, I think we could get some kind of legal trouble for using the, the pre-recorded Casio beat. All it was was just, you know... Tch, 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 tch. Yeah, and then it would go to, you know, and just throughout, throughout the whole scene, we'd have just this really bad, cheap music going throughout. So music's been pretty important to the show. Speaking of things that are important, uh, Kevin, the last time we talked, you were going to go to school at Drake, and Drake is in Iowa. Yeah. Are you still going to school in Drake? No. I, are I you going to school? I transferred back to the, the state-run university. In Iowa? <laughs> yeah, University of Nebraska, Lincoln. So I see. I'm, I'm back home. You've transferred back to the University of Nebraska, the state-run yes. school, as the you state call it. state-run university. Here in Nebraska, in Lincoln. Yes. Um, can you tell us why? Mm. Well, like I said, that there were, I just, it was an adventurous uh, time of drink. I don't know if. I want to get uh, to into the reasons why uh, it's, a lot of it had to do with uh, the people I met up there and uh, the school itself, the, the Des Moines environment as a whole. I don't really like to, to get into the specifics uh, on television, but um, I, gu I guess, I don't know, I've, I've told all, enough people already, so. It, it was just, it was a really tough time for me uh, being, being also away from home. Uh, uh, there was no one there that, that I could relate with um, to talk to, to my various problems about. Um, and it was just, just a, a nasty, nasty time. Uh, now, Kevin, I don't mean to embarrass you here, but I, do I detect tears in the eyes there uh, you know possibly. speaking of salt you two have done an infomercial satire mm. about salt have you not yeah uh, well, I thought you yes. had you know mr. director they've done this wonderful infomercial about salt why don't we cut to that infomercial that they've done and let's cut to that right now okay. hello and welcome to buy it I'm your host Joe Wiggum you remember last week when we featured the masticator, which pre-chewed your food for all you elderly types out there. We got a fabulous response with that. We sold enormous quantities of that, and this week we have the salinator. Yay! Hey! 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 Right. Hey! Yes, it makes salt water for you in your own home. In the privacy of your own kitchen, you can make your own salt water for up to one to maybe 10 people, who knows, maybe you'll have a party. Maybe it, you like the salt water for those nice romantic evenings with the family. Yay! Yay! Hey! Hey! Right. hey! But this week is the Salinator. And we have the creator of the product, Don Topio. Don? Hey! 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 Right. hey. Yeah. Thanks, Jim, and you know, the, the problem with the world's water supply today is that there's too much salt water, but that's what they say. And here at Buy It, we haven't listened to them in years. 
So that's why I have developed the salinator for those of you at home who like salt water. Now, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this wonderful machine does? Because I've, I've never seen a machine quite like this before. Well, basically, Jim, the salinator, you take some water, simple, ordinary tap water. You any water? Any water. I can use water in New York that's really chlorinated. Could I, could I take this to England where it's, it's unfluoridated and just any water will work? If you want salt water, the salinator is the machine. You can have salt from anywhere. That's wonderful. Salt from anywhere, water from anywhere. The salinator can handle it. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Now. 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 Hey! 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 Now, to show you how easy this is, I want Jim. Jim has never even used this product. I've, I've, never, I've never even seen this product. Uh, will I be able, I mean, I won't break it, will I? And will, I will it be OK? There is no worry about it. This is safety glass. You don't need to worry about breaking it. You can drop That's it. Incredible. We had tested it. We dropped it 10 stories. It didn't shatter. And the salt water That's tasted great. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Audience, isn't that amazing? So now, I think that's amazing. now, Jim, I think we've got some water. I th we, we, you, have, we have some ordinary tap water. We've got it already yeah. measured. Right here. Now, now this would be, how, how much would, would this amount of tap water serve? Is you can serve, generally what we decided at home was a cup per tablespoon or so of, of, of salt. And you can serve up to three or four people at a time. It's, it's quite amazing, and, and it's just great. I, most times, they're usually thirsty after drinking the salt water. Now, now I noticed that, that this is pre-measured here on the side. Isn't this handy? It, it has little measurements for, for up to, to five cups, um, four, three, two, uh, and yeah, one. That would be metric measuring, but, but on this side here, we, we, have, we have the actual cup measurements, you can which is handy. If you don't want to convert to metrics, you don't have to. And we know That's what they say about metric system, yes. but we don't, we, we don't listen so to them. So th this would serve up, up to four people. Four to five people. Four to five people. OK. Well, can I try this? Do I just? Go ahead. Just pour it in. Pour some in. Go ahead. All, can you just? Just pour it in. Like that? Now, was that easy? That was so easy. That was easy. That was easy. Now, I think we've got some salt here. We, we have some salt. Now, now, how much do I put? You put, just, just put some in. And just, I'll, just I'll tell you. I'll tell you when it's done. <laughs> is, is that? That, that should that, be enough. Was, now, that was easy, wasn't it? I didn't have to measure it. That, I just shook some salt are, in. Are Isn't that incredible? Are your fingers still dirty? They're, no, they're, they're, they're not dirty. They're you don't, not you're dirty. not going to get your hands dirty from this. Look at that. Now, My nails are fine. Now, this is a special cap that won't let that, the salt water that out. It fits right in there. It just fits It fits. On. Perfect. Look at that. And, and, and what, what would the purpose of, of this be? That, this that is, is to let the air into the salt water. You can make mayonnaise that way. So That's incredible. That is incredible. That's some great stuff. Because I know in my family, I like to make mayonnaise with mustard potato salad, which... which mayonnaise is some of the best stuff we've, we as the human race have ever made. I think so, too. So now, all you have to do... So now... You see that red button? Just press This red button? Just, just hold on to it for a little while. Just, just, just a little Just while. push the button. Just push and, it. It'll make salt water. All you have to do is push the button. Is that fine? Do you think it's ready? I think it's ready. It's ready now. It's ready now. And that, that was so easy. And now you've got your salt water. I made my own salt water. Now, would you like to take a drink of this salt water? Oh, um, well, I've never really tried salt water before. Is that? Now, that, it's now not, look at that. It's not just the flavor. And, and we've still got some more. See, I could serve, and, you know, I, I could have my friends over. For, for some card games or, or, or just to talk, we, we make salt water. Not only is the flavor some of the best taste ah, ever. Ah, that, that was. That's great. Oops. <laughs> you got that a nice bubble amazing. mustache. But that's, it's so healthy. That, that was some of the best tasting salt water. Salt. I've ever had. Audience, isn't that amazing? Yay! Yay! Hey! Right. Hey! 
That's me, just, that's fabulous. Let me tell this you all something a little bit mission. about salt. Now, the health benefits, not many, the doctors will tell you, we don't listen to them, but the doctors <laughs> will tell you that salt's bad for you. Well, we here at Biot realize we had some tests. We know that salt strengthens your arteries, makes them strong, makes them less flexible so they don't break. And that's why, that's, that's, some of the, that's just one of the benefits of no, drinking no, salt water constantly. I, I know that, you know, my arteries, they're, they're already feeling a little bit tougher. You know, if I, if I fall off a building, I don't think they'll break. My, my arteries are so strong from drinking salt water that I was shocked at, and the bullet bounced right off my arteries. I didn't bleed one bit. I haven't cut my fingers in years. Now, you have a guest with you who actually took this out and test marketed it yes. in a test area. Yes. Would you bring him out? Sure. Lawrence, would you come on out? Hello there. Hello, Lawrence. Hello. Hello. I am Lawrence Jolly Olio. Come to celebrate this wonderful product that we have here today. I want to tell you, I've been across the fields of the country exploring this vast, wonderful world of ours. Test I, marketing the product. Yes, I've been test marketing the product. And I have found that everywhere people love this product. Well, that's no, really great, no. Lawrence. Now, what, what, what do they find so unique in this product that, that our audience in the studio and at home would like to know about? Its uniqueness is its variety. You must say you could make salt water. Salt water is great. You could make salt water, and you could make water with salt in it. Don't forget the mayonnaise. No. The mayonnaise. The mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is a wonderful treat. I like to dip me fries in it. Well, our chips, as we call them back home. Sure, right <laughs> huh? Isn't Say, that a great audience? Yeah. Say, how much, how, much, how much are we selling this for today? Boy, you know, uh, I would say that we could expect to pay, mm, boy, I, w I would easily pay $200 for a product like this. And I often have. $200, audience, is, is this, would you pay $200 for this? Uh, no, I, I, think, I think that they I might want to see it a little bit cheaper. Than cheaper than 200, 200? I think. I think so. I think we're going to have to go lower to please our audience. I think so. Audience? I think they want to go can we, a little Can lower. we go any lower on this? Well, let's, let's give it a shot, shall we? Shall we say mm, $150? $150? $150, audience? Saw it in the catalog for that price. Still lower! <laughs> oh, lower! Lower! Still lower! <laughs> I think that they might go 150, but only if you lowered it a bit more and threw in some free stuff. Or how about an easy payment plan? An easy the payment plan. The audience is always a sucker for the easy payment plan. Now, right, you do, do you have any bonuses to go? Now this comes with with the with the handicap to keep the salt water to keep in. the salt water in the the air the air hole for making mayonnaise. Lovely. The salt. Comes with the free comes with salt the shaker. Now, does it come with anything else? As a matter of fact, it does come with other things. Shall we show them, Professor? Yes, why don't we get the other things? Now, I know that, that while in this studio, this looked really easy. I'm, I've, I've done, I've demonstrated products before. I might have a little edge up on some of the viewers at home because they might not find just, just picking up um, a new machine and using it hmm. to be that easy. Oh, yes. Well, realize how stupid Jim is and think how easy it's going to be for no. you at home. Now, it should be very, very easy for you at home. But just in case, you have... You have some prizes you, here. You have something to, to help our members at home. We have something to help you out. Number one, we have here some a recipe booklet. Oop, excuse me, sitting uh. on the side there. <laughs> You nutty Englishman. Uh, now, this is not just any recipe booklet. This is the recipe booklet for things you've never heard of. And this is kind of a, of a, a learning experience for those at home. 
And some of you have never even made mayonnaise. Maybe never even heard of salt water. Mm. This recipe booklet, it, it's going to guide you through. It's an easy, foolproof, step-by-step -step method. Well, you know, you know, I can read, Professor. I can read, certainly. I'm sure. not irritant, but... No. I might need some help with this booklet here. Okay. All right? And... And I think I've got the help right here with this other free item. The instructional video. The uh, instructional, instructional video. video. Now, <laughs> for our members at home, I'm, I'm sure all of you have VCRs. And, and you can just play that in. Will that fit in most VCRs? This tape will fit in most VCRs. Now that's handy. Now, how long would I have to sit and watch the instructional video? Because I might, my, my, my time span, I might not want to pay attention, attention for that You have a short attention span? I have a short attention span. No problem. This tape is only one minute long. Now, but that's it's incredible. cycled for over six hours. Yes. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> message. Incredible. Yes. You can fast that is, forward. That is amazing. You can stop it at any point in the tape. Be the one minute message that you need to help you along with reading the recipe book. Now that's wonderful. And does, does the instructional video also cover uh, the salinator as well as the recipe booklet? Well, not only does it cover the salinator in a full entire one minute, but in that minute you'll learn so much about the salinator, the recipe booklet, and how to make mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. Now, the wonderful thing about the instructional video is not only is it a minute long and you'll learn lots about this machine, but realize that I've already made a great batch of salt water and it tasted great. And I knew absolutely nothing about this machine. I'm sure there, there's a lot of little buttons here, a lot of little shiny objects. Lots uh, of like shiny and shiny buttons. Lots of shiny on, objects on my to machines. attract you. And, and I have no idea what these do. I mean, and you don't need to know what those buttons do. No. That's the beauty There's of this absolutely product. no point. You've got that red, nice, bright red button. That's all you need to remember. Uh, okay. Now, now Professor, now, now, yes. I, you know, I obviously see here that we have a recipe booklet, you know, for the things you've never heard of, to help you out in, you know, making product. And this videotape right here that fits in most VCRs will show, we'll show you how to make things. But, you know, sometimes I'm wondering, you know, what could I have along with some salt water with my meal? Uh, you mean, say, buy some things to go along with the salt water. That's right. That's correct. That's brilliant. So, I think that's fabulous. I think we should throw these in right here. Yes, sir. That's right. We're throwing in $5,000 worth of valuable coupons for things you don't want to buy. Right. Now, there is over $5,000 for things that you don't want to buy. And I, I do believe that most of these things are available at, at stores. And at stores near our audience members. If you go to a store, if you left right now, most of the things in this book will be at that store. We now, that is so. incredible. So now we have the salinator, the salt, the, the, the handy lid, the instructional, the instructional video, video, the valuable coupons, coupons and, and the, the recipe, recipe booklet. booklet. How much for all that? Boy, what was our last offer? 150? 150. And the audience does not look happy. I don't think the audience looks happy. Audience, do you look happy? <laughs> I don't think they look happy. We seem to have offended them with the objects that we've thrown in. We must lower the price for them. All right. I say let's lower the price to 99.95. That's a breakthrough. $99.95, audience. That's a $200 That's... value, plus the video, plus the booklet, plus $5,000 worth of the, coupons. The coupons alone will pay for probably... Your house. Your house. Your if, house. You know. Audience, that's a $100 price for a $5,200 deal. How does that sound? But there's a little tension. A little there. apprehension, perhaps? I Maybe see. if you had an easy payment plan. I think an easy payment plan, but don't you. Isn't there something left that we can throw in well, to, to make this? Let's see here. What do we have down here? Oh, oh look. I think we found a that's, little treasure down that's here. That's what they want. <laughs> that's exactly what they want. Ashtrays. Ashtrays. Ashtrays, audience. These are some of the nicest ashtrays that you'll ever find. Now, 
I, I don't know if you've seen the other Byatts, but these were also given away on the Masticator mm -hmm. for the pre-chewed food. Wonderful product, I must say. And it's, I haven't had to replace my dentures in weeks with the Masticator. But these ashtrays, there are circles. And that means it's the same, same distance across. As it is no matter, no matter, no matter where you measure it. So it doesn't matter where you put your cigarette. Now, you are correct. I could put just about anything in these wonderful ashtrays now. I, I could put my salt in here. Oh, it's, look at that. I could, I could put my, my cup on there. That's wonderful. With the pre-made salt and, water. And with the pre-made salt water. It makes a wonderful coaster. If, if I lose um, the little covering for the air hole, look, look, I can put it up there. Now, I think that together with the video, the $5,000 in coupons, the salt, and the recipe booklet. The recipe booklet. I think, I think ninety nine ninety five is great. Now, do you have a payment plan for our audience? I think we do. I think if everybody out there chips in a dollar every day, every, every day. day they That's chip easy. in a dollar to a little pan because they don't have one of these lovely ashtray to put their but dollars in. They will. In. That's right. They chip in a it. dollar every day. They will pay off their new product in only 99 and a half days. Isn't that amazing, Albert? <laughs> yes. 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 That's amazing. That's... I think the audience likes that. Well, why don't we tell everyone at home how they can get this out? Now, for your people at home, you can order this with, with, the, with the 99 and one half easy payments. You get the salinator. You get the instructional video, you get the salt, you get the ashtrays, you get the recipe booklet, and, and you get the valuable coupon. Five thousand dollars. Now this is available now, and we'll go we'll go to our operators who are standing by uh, to tell you um, just just how you would order that. Great deal. Well, thank you very much. Can I try some of that water? Absolutely. That's right. It's the Salinator, your lovely salt water maker and mayonnaise accessory. It is yours for only $99.95. That's right. An easy installment payment plan of $1 a day for 99 and one half days. Shipping handling $4.55. Call 155-SALT for your ordering pleasure. Plus, it comes with a free salt shaker, instructional video, valuable coupons for things you don't want to buy, a recipe booklet for things you've never heard of, and two lovely ashtrays that you can fill with almost anything. Operators are standing by. Call now. <laughs> ah. mm. Lovely. The Salinator gives you salt water, hardened your arteries, and it's available in only 99 and one half easy payments. Of one dollar each. Of That's $1 right. Each. Ah. Our operators That's, are standing isn't by. Isn't that healthy? Isn't that a nice, healthy taste? I feel my arteries hardening already. Why, I don't think I could cut your hand <laughs> if I wanted to. Our operators are standing by. Now, for those of you who did order, we know you're going to be enjoying your salinator. Those of you who still have a chance to order who have not, you're out, you're going to miss out. So order now. A frequent guest on the old Man, Cat, Do, and Tom Foolery show when it was in production was Colby Stark. He was a friend, or is a friend, of Justin Firestones and Kevin Gregorius. They all went to Southeast High School together, and we're going to find out what Colby Stark's been up to um, since last we talked with Kevin and Justin. Colby. Hi. Hi. What have you been doing in the last year and a half since you last appeared mm. on the regular old Tom Foolery Boy, show? since the old Tom Foolery show back in 56, uh... <laughs> Let's see, you know, I graduated from, from high school back in the day, and I went off to college at Dream State. And I went there for a semester, and, and uh, I really did an excellent job at failing my classes. So I decided to go back for another semester. Uh, uh, first semester, actually, I was a music student, and I decided to get right out of that. But the second semester, I went back and um, did an even better job of failing again this time. So, you know, I just thought about college as, you know, a little off in the future. I'll, I'll go back to that maybe someday. Mom, sure I will. So, um, in the meantime, I've been working, and I got an apartment. Whoa. Oh. Where have you been working? 
I work at uh, Twister's Music and Gifts. Now, if there are legions of fans out there who are watching this and are thinking, I want to see a real live television personality in person, which Twisters is it they need to go to in order to see you? Um, I'm currently employed at the, at the downtown Twisters. All right. Be, I suppose the headquarters. All right. The major Twisters. Sure. Okay. And they, like can, they can find you down there schlepping records. I'm usually there every day, yeah. I see. Selling CDs and all that and stuff. And that's, once again, what's the name of the store? Twisters. And it is located? Uh, 1401 O Street. Which is downtown Lincoln. Downtown Lincoln, Nebraska. But Alaska. are uh -huh. there other Twisters around the city? Sure there are. There's one uh, at uh, 61st Snow Cross from Gateway. Yes. There's one out at the East Park Plaza yes. with shopping and adventure. And there's one at 48th and Van Dorn at that new little shopping center. And there's one actually now on the way up to Omaha at that Nebraska Crossing place. And the name of the chain of record stores, of CD stores, uh -huh. set stores is? Twisters, Music yes. and Gifts. And Colby Stark works at the downtown right. Twisters. Is this all you do is work at Twisters? Um, I've been working there for a little over a year, but my time is also filled with uh, playing the drums, actually. Do you just do a solo drum act and well, I've been in a your band. And play? You've like, been in a band? Yeah, I've been in a band for the past two years called Roosevelt Franklin. Now, does Roosevelt Franklin play what kind of music? Uh, boy, that's a pretty tough one. Um, it's pretty bizarre Well, we don't do stuff. Wayne King waltzes, do we? No, no waltzes, really. We have some three, four times stuff, I think. But, you know, really it's all a big combination of everything you'd ever think of. You know, I mean, Lawrence Welk would have to be one of our major influences, sure. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> tied in with some, you know, Frankie Yankovic and <laughs> all that. Seriously, what kind of music do you play? Um, yeah, it's, well, honestly, it's just weird, bizarre, wacko, crazy, wild, kooky stuff. Now, if I would like to hear Roosevelt Franklin, mm -hmm. is there someplace I can go where I can hear Roosevelt Franklin? Sure. Well, you could, uh, if, if we're ever playing live, you know, you could come see us live. Otherwise, uh, we well, just... What if I want to take you home with well, me? We just, well, we just put out a CD, actually, uh -huh. um, called Dining Out with Roosevelt Franklin. And is this available in your nearest record store? Mm-hmm, sure. Is there a favorite record store of yours that handles? Well, you know, of course, you can come buy it from me at Twisters, you know. That's the downtown Twisters, Downtown isn't it? Twisters, yeah. Yes, as well as any of the other Twister locations sure. around. Sure, any of them, or all those record stores are like independent record stores, too, and all kinds of stuff, you know. And the name of the CD is, once again? Dining Out. With? With Roosevelt Franklin. And Roosevelt Franklin is not a person. Roosevelt Franklin is several people well, because it is a? Band. That plays all kinds of? Music, but he's not, not, he is, he was a person, so to say. Well, he really was. Yeah. He was a Muppet on Sesame Street. Oh. He's my favorite Muppet, because he was really cool. Did you have anything to do with the naming of the band? Um, I, well, a friend of mine, I used to, used to talk about Roosevelt Franklin with this friend of mine named Evelyn, and she just suggested, hey, why don't you just name the band Roosevelt So thanks Franklin. to Evelyn, there now thanks is a Evelyn. CD yep. that's called... Dining Out with Roosevelt Franklin. And, is lo and you can get it at any of your neighborhood record stores, but particularly at... At Twisters. Especially the downtown Twisters, where if you want to, you can meet live and in person, not only the band member with Roosevelt Franklin, who now has a CD called Dining Out with Roosevelt Franklin, mm -hmm. but you can also meet a television personality. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> now, did you enjoy working with the tomfoolery duo back in the days when oh, they were doing their productions boy, on, uh, on you know, a monthly basis? I've, I've just loved these fellas. They're so sweet. And, uh, yeah, I've been working with them. I think I first met, I know I met, Kevin in, in an algebra class. We uh, wrote a little song together called PMS. It's a pretty good song. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there are some others in that class. And, and I got to know Justin. And we were in uh, the jazz band together as he played the saxophone. And then, you know, the rest of the crew of characters with Danny and all those cool guys and Cody Thomas, who we don't really know where Cody is. So, Cody, if you're out there, you know. Come to the really? downtown Twisters. Yeah, come to the downtown Twisters. The television and... personality who also plays in a band and has his own CD. Sure, Cody used to beat You know, I used yeah. to, I, I, when I watched the, the Tom Foolery show when it was on a monthly basis, one of the things that I liked watching were some of the skits that you were involved in with Justin and Kevin. And uh, Mr. Director, if you don't mind, why don't we punch up one of those skits right now and let's watch a skit that's, that has in it not only Kevin and Justin, but also Colby Stark, who's been the person I've been talking with these past few minutes, who is in a band and who also works at the Downtown Twisters, and his band now has its very own CD. So stop by and see him and take a listen to his music. But anyway, let's watch that clip that has Colby Stark in it. Hi, I'm Mike Flagellum. I'm an actor, and I used to play a doctor on TV back when I still had talent. But today, I'm here to talk to you about bed sores. 
Bed sores is a problem that's sweeping our country, and no one seems to care about it. We may have a thousand points of light, but those thousand points of light, I have to say about, well, about half of them, even more, have bed sores. You're in danger, and we feel we're here to talk to you about it. I'm here today with a doctor, Dr. T.C. Ranson. Doctor, please tell us about this horrible, terrible problem that is facing our nation. Well, Mike. Yes? Back in Luxembourg, mm -hmm. where I studied bed sores for the first time, we had a number of cases mm. with... Uh, yes, yes, um, Ernie, you're okay. We had a number of cases yeah. Yeah. that they don't have a cure for bed sores. Mm. And, and it's very sad. Uh -huh. And what I've been doing is working on a preventative program. Oh. Ah! And I noticed that, that sometimes plates in their heads is usually preventative, but as we can see, we did not get his plate on in oh. time. <sighs> Buck quite, up, camper. It's quite sad for Ernie. But we're going to point out to you some of the key warning signals mm. for bed sores. Ernie, come and, and these are things, these are things that you at home should write down and make sure you keep track of these things and that they don't show up in your family. The yeah. earlier you discover these, the earlier we can stop the spread. I, I did not authorize taping this. It's okay, Ernie. Yes, Ernie has, has gotten uh, what we call legal disease, mm. uh, the stage of bed sores, where he is worried constantly about his legal affairs. Mm. Okay, Ernie, can you tell us a little bit about your fang teeth? When did you first start seeing that? I don't see them. I still don't see them. That's the first sign. <sighs> How tragic. No horrible, no horrible sight. Tragic. First lose the sight. Now this shiny is, object. Yes, an attraction to shiny objects is also part of that. He, uh, the, his hair has grown over his eyes. And it's also the second stage of bed sores. Now, you also see him doing the third stage, which is chewing on things. Mm. It's very difficult to uh. keep a bed sore patient at home. It's always chewing on things. My home is not my home. He's again delirious. That's stage four. And what are some other symptoms, doctor, Well, of bed sores? I don't know. This is not really quite for public television here, but... As you can see, pubic on. television. I yes. don't think that is inappropriate for children today. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Ernie, there you go. Ernie, Ernie is displaying another symptom we call, we, we doctors like to call it, uh, one enlarged breast. Oh, Lord. That's, it's quite tragic, as you can see this right here. <laughs> That's it's, violating my civil rights. I should sue you. Yes, we violated his personal air cushion there. The six inches all the way around him that he's always concerned with. But I assure you, in the upcoming research at Luxembourg, I'll certainly find a cure for this horrible disease. This is tragic, Doctor. This, we're trying so hard. But you're doing well here when we present this announcement. We are trying to raise money to help stop bed sores. This tragic, tragic problem. So we can bring messages about preventative bed sore medicine to you. Yeah. Would you like to have one breast, America? Would you like to have one enlarged, large breast? I don't think so. I don't think so. <sighs> please, please come to your senses. Please come to your checkbooks. Please, America, come to us with your money and help us out in raising money for this cause. Ernie, it's OK. I care for you, and you should care, too. Don't touch me. I like him. So please, be careful. Check yourself, Martha, for bed sores. That's right. Thank you very much. This has been brought to you by the National League and Council of Warts. I really enjoy it when you guys do the satires and the takeoffs that you do. One of my favorites was where you took on the home shopping, <laughs> the <laughs> home shopping industry. And I think it was QVC, and you came up with some name of your own. Oh, yes. Home we have, Quality Shopping Club or something like that. We have it great was, respect for... And, uh, and that, that got quite a bit of recognition among people well, who they, watch those kind of things, right? Um, there, I... It, it sounds really dumb. 
but they are, they are a, a good inspiration because they they provide some of the, the best satire yeah, material. Yeah, I believe firstly that those guys probably some of the best all time, you know, TV people, TV mm -hmm. personalities. They they work the camera so well, you know. They play off of people they, on the phones. Uh, one of my favorite things was they were selling this crystal castle. It has gold steps, you know, four spiraling sets of stairs spiraling up this gold castle. And they're like, that's, isn't that magical? They're talking about how the, how, how the light kind of played off and made these beautiful colors in the castle. And, and the guy goes, you know, that's really magical. That's, you know, I was thinking the other day, there's just not enough magic in this world. And I'm thinking... <laughs> This man is a genius. They, he could sell anything. <laughs> He's probably one of the best TV personalities ever. Yes. And so it's just those people, it's so easy to make fun of people like that. Those, those people in the, uh, uh, the hey. Ron Popeil, his pasta machine. Uh, game shows, we the, love to The make game fun shows of. are great, always. Now, is there anything else that you like to make fun of besides QVC? Well, we were, we were hired. Um, at oh, an make, art gallery. Oh, and to, what we to did. To make fun, we got up and did the, kind of the stuff we do on the show. And the big act was, uh, it was a satire of the Civil War series on, on PBS. Basically, what we did was we made fun of the historians who, of course, uh, know everything about the Civil War and argue back and forth about who, who was right about the specific details. Now, have you ever performed this skit anywhere? Yes. Yes, we, did. we performed it at the art gallery. Surya Art Gallery. And we, yes, the Surya Art Gallery. And we attempted to perform it at the school talent show. But they... But you know, I think someplace where, where really uh, perceptive and, um, oh, I don't know, intellectual people would gather, such as an art gallery, might be a good place to perform something like that, don't mm -hmm. you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but it was pretty receptive. Have you ever performed it? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, you and did. actually, um, it's actually, we also did the QVC Home Shopping Network. Actually, we called it the Quality Shopping Club. We also performed that there, and that actually got more response than the Civil War deal because, I don't know, the Civil War has kind of an esoteric blend, and it's kind of hard to get the jokes. So at, um, people who drink espresso, mm, yes, yes. The kind those that who hang out at the coffee though, houses around yeah, town. Yeah, I see in a little we cafe au lait. Pseudo intellectual types. Pseudo intellectual, yeah. I see. It's That's it. because the true and intellectuals and are yeah. those who have the ability to make fun of the yeah. Civil oh, War. Oh, to make fun of the pseudo intellectuals who yes. are esoteric and drink espresso. Yeah. Thus, we are the true. <laughs> Intellectual. Because you don't drink espresso. Yes. I drink Which espresso. Is, oh, you do drink espresso. Have you gotten into cafe au lait yet? No. Cafe latte? Mm, no. Oh, okay. I just, I, I like the, the, the So you're a novice. He likes espresso. Novice. Coffee. I see. Okay. He likes All his right. coffee black like his men. Because we like okay. the little, little <laughs> joke we have. So. I see. Do you know there was another little skit thing that you did that I really didn't like at all? Mm. I detested. <laughs> I thought it was probably one of the most inane and, and ridiculous and least challenging of any of the creative things of course. that you did. Have you any idea of what I'm talking about? The animation? No, no, no. <laughs> That's no, no. It involved the olfactory sense. Mm. Oh, boy. Any idea of what I'm talking about? Yes, mm. indeed. It <laughs> couldn't, it couldn't that, be that you've so done weird. another. No, we, you haven't done another uh, one. We had, yeah, we, it is actually in the kind of, you know, how they have the lost episodes, you know, they kind of this suddenly find. This is the episode find, nobody ever wanted to find. Yes, they kind of suddenly find a tape and they play it, you know. Like if somebody found a new episode of the Brady Bunch and hadn't been seen, they could put it on prime time and, you know, probably get the highest ratings that week. That was, that's us. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. We kind of found an extra. And what do we call this little skit, this little mm. episode we're about to watch? What's that smell? What's that smell? So, Mr. Director, I guess yeah. we have to because they're the guests and they know what they want. So, roll it and let's watch a What's That Smell? Hello, and welcome to the What's That Smell Tournament of Champions. Now, you may have been watching over the past year, we had some winners of our previous three tournaments. I'd like you all to meet them now. With me on my right is contestant number one. What's your name? My name is Al Aloysius Benescula. Aloysius. Aloysius, I'm sure you all remember, was the winner of our senior tournament. Good going, Al. Over here, we have contestant number two, who I'm sure you all remember was winner of the teen tournament. My name is John, John Doe. John Doe, that's an interesting name. How did you get that? 
My mother gave it to me. That's great. Now, over here on my left again is contestant number three. Contestant number three, as you can tell with the mortar board, was the champion of the college tournament. Now, contestant number three, what's <coughs> your name? My name is Henry W. Glass III. Well, that's pretty snooty. OK. All right, Al. Since you are the oldest, we're going to have you start. And before we start, we must announce what the smell is to our viewers at home. And of course, as always, we'll have it done in secrecy. And it has not been placed in any place in this room so as to give one person advantage over the other. Now, contestants at home, play along. We're going to let you know what that smell is. And the smell is burning hair. What is that smell, Al? I got to tell you, I got a hoodoo that this. That's not going to fail me. It's going to do good. All I'd have to say that smell is my wife Vera's cooking. It's so good. Cooking. Cooking. Cooking is your guess. Yeah. Sorry. It's not the answer. What? It's not the smell we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We will not penalize you for being wrong this time, Al, but I, must, I have to remind you that it can't be a smell from your wife. Wouldn't there be no penalties this time? Okay, now. All right, John. It's your turn. You're going to impress all your friends out there in teen land. What's that smell? It smells like a cat's litter box. No, it is not cat's litter box, but I, I do have to say that I think John is, is, is on the track. But since. He's on crack. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Al. He's... Okay, contestant number three. Henry, we'd like to know, with that snooty nose of yours, what's that smell? I think I know the answer. Well, do you? The answer is, it is the small orange fungus, E. pluribus unum, which is commonly found on the back of the poisonous spitting Brazilian tree frog. Sorry, but that is also incorrect. <laughs> that was probably the farthest away answer. And since you chose to use science and Latin, you'll be penalized from guessing on your next turn. Oh. Now, Al. Uh, take that, Yahtzee boy. <laughs> Al, we must remind you to keep from using Yiddish. Uh, Yahtzee, you know the game, Yahtzee. It's Yahtzee boy over there. Yes, yes, Al. Um, wh why, why don't you guess again this time? And right. I'll guess again, and I'm going to say smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. That's so close, but you're so far because oh. you're still speaking in Yiddish, and I have to penalize you from guessing on your next turn. Oh. I'm sorry. Hard, Those are the rules. Make them up as you go. Okay, John, teen, teen man, what's that smell? I think the smell is the exhaust from a 55 Buick. Hmm, that's, that's, that's a good guess. But unfortunately, you're still wrong. And because you guessed an, in, an inanimate, it was an inanimate smell. And so I must, I must penalize you. And, and you're not longer, you no longer get to guess on your next turn. Now. Ah. Mr. Henry uh, Snooty, what's, whatever he was, the third. After being so rudely treated, I think I have the answer anyway. Okay, but let me ask the question. What's that smell? That smell would be the pungent odor following the chemical reaction which occurs when mixed between sulfur and iodine. Hmm. Gee, I, I'm not sure if. But you're white and old, man. <laughs> no, I, I think we can't give that to you. We can't give that to you because, again, using science, you gave us too specific of an answer. And I'm sorry, we have to disqualify you from guessing on your next turn. Which means, since everyone was disqualified, it is now final and third round. And again, 
Al, Last it's your turn. Boy. It's your Bruce. turn, Al. And uh, I think I think you, if you want to win this, it's you better get that old nose going, Al. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you, what's that smell? I'm gonna have to go with my instincts. It stinks, that's right. That's right. It's, what, what's that smell? I'd say it's burnt hair. You win. I'm a winner. It is burnt hair. Yes. Now, Al, yes. this is the Tournament of Champions. Now, not only do you win yes. the smell, I'm a winner. You, won, you win what is the smell, the burning hair. But now, yes. our staff is busy right now placing another smell in this room now you have you get if you win if you get this smell yeah. you get to pick from the bag of fun bag of fun the bag of fun oh now boy. al i put a little 19 year old in there hey al that's <laughs> right now we uh we have some some thinking music for you All right. and we're going to play the thinking music and when the thinking music is done, you have to you have to guess. You have to tell us what that smell is. Okay. Hit me. Hit it. I'm not That didn't really sound like the uh, bonus music. Um, I, I can't think what that Wait, wait, Al, we... music going on. I don't know. Let's get... I think I think if they can find us the right uh, bonus music, I think that would be pretty helpful. Can we find the right bonus music? That's much, that's much. That's, 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 Oh, oh, I'd have to say it's a fresh deck of cards. No, it's burnt hair. It's burnt you hair. You win. Burnt it hair. is. No, it is burnt, burnt hair again. Yes. You win twice. <laughs> I was afraid. I was afraid there for a minute that you were going to. Okay. Yes. The bag of joy. The bag of joy. Mix it up. Don't oh. just find something good in All there. Right. Bag of joy. I'm gonna pull out an egg. It's an egg, everyone at home. I hope you at home have had just as much fun as we have here. I hope you watch us next season. We'll have a new set, new contestants, new smell. Thank you all for watching. What's that smell? For the truly diehard Tom Foolery fans who used to really. Watch. Yes, we've heard the, stories that there are people out there. <laughs> That's three, a, in search of the Tom Fury, yes, yes. who, who actually are uncaged, who watch <laughs> Tom Fury on a voluntary yes. basis. The two or three people who did, who, who watched from remember, a monthly basis. Do you basis. remember a guy, Vern? <laughs> yeah. he, on a monthly basis. Yeah. Um, for these, the benefit of these people, there is the possibility that there might be more Tom Fury above and beyond this particular mm -hmm. special yeah, that absolutely. they're watching right now. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. Even though this isn't the regular Studio 3 kind of thing that we have done in the past, and we're, we're kind of having fun with the whole concept mm -hmm. here, it's really been enjoyable talking oh, to you. I'm glad nice. you're both back together. I'm, both, I'm glad you're both back in Lincoln. Yes, we're glad. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see this special that you've done and to see all oh, the different elements yeah. that you've put into it. Watch Channel, Channel 14 on uh, September in February. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Yay! Hey! Yes. Hey! Thank you.